What's going on everybody? It's the Bearded One back with another beer review and actually I know it's been a while, possibly even two weeks. I'm not exactly sure when my last video was, but it's been a while. Um, I actually reviewed two beers uh, in between my last video and this one. And uh, the first video, the review actually went pretty nice, I thought. But I rewatched the video. Yes, I rewatched my videos. So one of my neighbor's dogs was just barking, bark, 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 all throughout the video. I'm not fixing to post that up. Uh, second review I tried, I tried to review the Guinness Drought Stout. Uh, post Irish, um, post St. Patrick's Day, excuse me. Um, and my wife came out of the bathroom and peeked in and I saw her head in that door frame. Uh, not mad at her. Uh, she just wanted to come in for a glass of water, but it, it ruined the review. I'm not mad. The Guinness is easy to find. It wasn't a white whale. Um, only thing that sucks about it is uh, I'm trying to review these pours. You know, when you review the pour and you're trying to judge the dissipation of the head and all that. You you know, you watch beer reviews. You already know. Um, but... I buy pick sixes for my reviews. I don't buy a whole six pack of a beer uh, when it comes to beers I want to review. And so it just kills the video whenever, uh, kills the whole thing whenever the videos run. Enough of that aside, let's get down to what you came here for the beer review. Today we're reviewing uh, a historically famous beer from a historically famous brewery got my trusty glass here and we are reviewing the saint bernardus wit now i don't know who uh invented the wit beer uh, i know it came from that belgium either belgium or bavaria southern central germany somewhere in there that area invented the wit beer um and it went out of style almost into extinction in the early is it the 20th century it was the 1900s the 20th century i believe so almost became extinct almost nobody uh made wit beers by the 1950s and that's where Pierre Sellis came in to play and he re he helped found the Hogarden uh, brewery in Hogarden Germany I'm sure you've heard of the brewery the beer is easy to find it's I mean I can get it here so I know if I can get it in North Alabama I'm sure you can get it wherever you are and um Pierre also collaborated with St. Bernardus um, in making their wit beer. So you have two very famous wit beers from the region of the world where wit beer originated from. So it only makes sense for Pierre to collaborate with St. Bernardus. Um, I don't know much about the brewery. I don't know if they still brew in a monastery. I know that I know it's this. I just don't know a lot of background on St. Bernardus and uh, I don't want, I don't like to give too much information on breweries if I can find a lot more on the beer because I plan in the future to do a series where maybe we do some historical thing uh, where we learn about the breweries and cover some history or whatever but I, I don't want to clog my videos up with that. Okay, four minutes and I've yet to pour the beer. Let's get into the pour and we will talk more about the beer as, as we want to head. Let's hope I don't party foul. I've been party fouling lately on camera and it's embarrassing. Alright. I don't know, maybe y'all don't care about that can. We're gonna get to that aroma here in a second. Very pleasant aroma. So, it's obviously a top fermented beer. It's a wit beer. 
5.5% uh, alcohol. You can station these all day. I know people like to say that. I usually don't, but if you want to, if you want to buy, mine came in a four pack at my beer store. If you want to buy four or a six pack of these, I mean, you could finish the whole thing and not be trashed, depending on your tolerance. Um, Plato. I don't know what Plato is, but maybe you do. That is the number twelve. Um, Recommended pouring temperature is between 2 and 6 degrees Celsius. I don't know Celsius. I'm a dumb, stupid American. I use Fahrenheit. If, if you know what Celsius is, that's what it's recommended pouring at. Um, I did let this beer sit 5-ish, 10-ish minutes before I poured it, though, so it, it wasn't, you know, straight out of the fridge. Um, the color is 12 EBC. Not sure what that means. Um, bitterness, the EBU, I'm, sh I'm assuming that's the European Bitterness Unit Scale. Uh, in America, we call it the International Bittering Unit Scale, the IBUs. But I guess if you're from Europe, you can say European Bittering Units, and it is 15, so it's not bitter at all. Um, shelf life, you can give it about two years, um, they say. And then there's some packaging information and then the characteristics and tasting notes. So I don't read tasting notes because that's what we do here. So you see the head dissipated, but it's still there. Now it looks a little more like apple juice on camera, but here in real life... definitely a pale yellow pale straw color um, it is unfiltered Let's see here Let's see if I can get it without the decals yeah I can't see through the beer I do feel like it's not as unfiltered as others but it's still hazy and I still can't see through the beer there's um excuse me surprisingly there's a lot of bubbles going on in this beer um, I mean, not as many bubbles as, say, a Bud Light, but uh, there's bubbles going on here for a bit. Um, there's not... There might be some sediment at the bottom of my beer. Um, unfiltered beers, regardless of the style, usually have some kind of sediment floating around in them because they're unfiltered and that leaves more uh, particles that impart flavors in your beers. And you'll get a lot of sediment in those unfiltered filtered beers. But I'm not seeing a lot of uh, sediment. I'm thinking they maybe have lightly filtered this beer because there is a, around the edges of the glass, it does look a little more clear. Um, let's see here. Not a lot of legs on this beer. Barely any lacing. The head's still there. I mean, it dissipated, but it's still there. It's this nice white uh, sheet over the beer. A lot of, a lot of uh, flavors going on in this aroma. I really like the nose on this beer. Um, I'm getting that pear apple family. Um, Yeah, I'm leaning more towards pear. I'm getting pear. I don't get the orange that you get in a wit beer. There's usually some kind of a citrus aroma. Um, I get the coriander, but the, there's clove in this. Now, um, I found there's clove in the hoe garden as well, at least in the aroma. I didn't read that there's clove in the hoe ho garden. But um, it does say on the website here that there is clove and spices used in the St. Bernardus wit. And the guy that made the Ho Garden wit collaborated and made this wit. So, and I get that clove aroma in the Ho Garden. Uh, so I would I just assume uh, there's it's natural for a European traditional wit beer to have clove, which is very interesting to me because when I taste. American wit beers, they usually don't have clove in them. They're mostly uh, just the orange and the coriander and whatever else they might put in there. Uh, but there's no clove usually. Uh, when it comes to the American style uh, European knockoffs, 
I usually find that the Hefeweizens have the clove in them and the banana smell, um, which is a very interesting take because, again, like I said, the St. Bernardus and the Hogarden have the clove, and they're the traditional uh, wits, um, as opposed to the American ones that uh, I like as well. So, cheers to you guys. I'm going to get into the palette here. So on the palette, I feel like I do uh, get that, uh, the orange, it tastes more of like an orange peel instead of like somebody squeezing orange juice in the beer. Um, the, the apple pear thing is more subdued. Yeah, I feel like I'm hit with that clove at first. And then right after the clove, I'm getting that orange peel and possibly the coriander. Um, I feel like I've drank enough with beers to kind of understand what coriander smells like. But I've never seen coriander. I've never taken a handful of coriander and stuck it to my nose. Uh, so I don't want to sit here and uh, act like... Yeah, that's the coriander, but I feel like the coriander's right behind uh, that clove introduction, um, playing with the orange, and then on the back end, I get that pear apple vibe going on as I'm swallowing it and it's going down. Yeah, I like how everything uh, just kind of flows together. Uh, it's not choppy. It's not spiky. It's every, everything just kind of, it's a very smooth flavor profile. I really like it. Um, definitely a malty, bready thing going on here, but that kind of, it kind of mixes in with the clove, and I like that. It, it's a very good marriage of the malt. If they even use malt, I don't know. Uh, the wheat brady notes and that clove go very well together. Um, the body, I'd say it's it's more on the lighter side, light, medium bodied, leaning more towards the light. Um, the carbonation is barely there. Uh, it's, it's enough to notice your beer is carbonated. Um, I've had less carbonated beer, wit beers than this. Um, but yeah, overall a great beer. Uh, if you like wit beers, this is the perfect time of year to crack you open a wit beer, you know, springtime, summertime. Um, this is actually my favorite style of beer. Um, I just love my sweet malty, uh, beers. I, I don't really get into the bitter stuff. I'll drink the bitter stuff. I'm going to review the bitter stuff, but this is just wit beers are my jam. I love, I love them. So, I'm going to rate this beer, um, I'm going to give it a 4 out of a 5, um, I, I feel like it's good enough to have an A rating, uh, but there's, I just don't like the clove in my wit beers now, I know maybe I'm doing wit beers wrong, because as I discussed earlier, Hogarden and St. Bernardus are the traditional wits. Uh, it's about as close as you can get to the original wit beers. Um, and they had the clove as opposed to the American wit beers. And the American wit beers do not usually put clove in their wit beers. Uh, so maybe I'm doing wit beers wrong, but that's just my preference. Um, I definitely recommend this beer to you crack it open and try it if you like the uh hazy sweet stuff summertime beers uh, i definitely recommend this to rookies out there looking to get their feet wet into craft beer and good international uh beers 
uh, yeah, 4.0. Can't say much else about it. Go get you some St. Bernardus Whitbeer. Until next time, guys. Cheers.